Hey everyone, welcome to the Ganja Show. Uh, today we have with us George. He's coming on a, as a guest for the second time on the show. He's a cannabis entrepreneur and he he specializes in uh, government relations with regards to cannabis regulations in Mexico. Uh, in our last podcast, we discussed about uh, the Mexico government uh, is going to take some steps with regards to cannabis regulations. And I think just two weeks after that, uh, wo, there are two houses in Mexico. in terms of government and one of them passed the uh, the bill for Mex- uh, cannabis legalization so welcome george to the show hello 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 uh, welcome thank you very much for your invitation i am happy to be here again thank yeah you. I th- your thank your you guys <laughs> your prediction to with regards to legalization was amazing i mean what do you think about it well uh, the thing is is um uh, It's a normal situation in Mexico because, as you said, Mexico has two chambers, yeah, two legislative chambers. So the Senate approved the the legalization, and now the member of the parliament, the lower house, they ask uh, for for more time to analyze the bill because it's a really complex uh, uh, industry with yeah. several 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 points and several structures and several uh, kind of business. and several regulations also so the lower house need uh, they need more time to analyze to 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 have readings and to understand better what is the impact for or for the mexican society so they have only 10 12 days to analyze an issue with this importance so i i think the best option is to discuss again and vote again uh, the next year Yeah, I mean I get it. Uh if you sort of fast in the process of legalization a bit, you might miss out on some important points. Uh we have been seeing a lot of these articles with uh, cannabis and Mexico and a lot of people talking about it, but I haven't seen one where somebody from Mexico is talking about it. So what do you think about that? Uh the thing is that well, the real situation is that Mexico does not have real real experts in the cannabis industry mm-hmm. so some people write about the industry some people are write about marijuana some people write about the 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 most important thing is that some uh, activist uh, some acti- several group of activists work in, in, in to legalize the, the 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 marijuana and the all well, the cannabis mm-hmm. so it is important because they have the right to choose their own personality activities to to use cannabis or not this is important and the other part is uh, the de- decriminalization of the plant so this is the, this justice this so- social justice is important but it's not only the one thing this this is this is not only one thing the industry is more complex the industry have many many challenges in terms of society in terms of security in terms of economic development so everyone i see uh, and i read many articles around the world about people what they think about mexico and cannabis but at the end of the day they don't live in mexico many of these people never go ne- never go, never go to mexico only for vacations so they don't have a deep understanding in what is the, the political complexity in mexico and the social impact for for the cannabis uh, uh, legalization mm-hmm. so th- th- those are my thoughts about what is p- people i think that people are speculating about yeah. the Ma- the mexican market about the mexican possibility about the recreational aspects and and also the industrial and they these people does not have any more uh, data of what is the real situation in mexico it's what i see yeah uh, one of the things that a lot of people are talking about and it is mentioned like sort of the headline of these articles is that mexico is going to become the number one federally legalized market in terms of population uh, i mean what are your thoughts on that because it's i mean population is just a number uh, there is a big illicit market in mexico which will still exist because it does exist in canada as well so uh, do you think any like mexico is going to become the number one in terms of sales or other figures anytime soon yes 
Uh, one, one. Uh, I, I had um, several Zoom meetings with uh, several groups of uh, parliamentary groups and okay. members of the parliament. So the real thing is that it is a huge challenge. There is no precedent. There is no precedent in the world yeah. with a country like Mexico in the legalization of cannabis. Canada, the, the, the Canadian society is totally different from Mexico. Yeah. Uruguay is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a small country if you compare it with Mexico. So it's not precedent. This is an exper- This is an ex- a social experiment for Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, there is no precedent. There is no precedence if if there is no evidence also if the legalization of cannabis will be better to drop uh, the the crime and the violence in Mexico. There is no yeah. par- evidence of that. Uh, so it is also important to say that if Mexico does not have I'm talking in the recreational market. Of course, it will be the biggest recreational market in the world. So if Mexico does not have supply chain in the recreational market and and having supply chain in the recreational market takes time, Mm -hmm. the only people who's going to win is the the gangs that sell cannabis because they have the seeds, they have the plants, they have the distribution. They have the people working on that. So this is the first problem. The second problem is that people, non-violent groups, people will start growing cannabis, and I think they will sell cannabis also. Yeah. Not in a violent way. Not, not, people who, who want uh, more money, uh, they will sell cannabis. They will sell joints. They will sell dry flour. They will sell edibles as a, as a situation of have more money. And it will be the second market. And the third market will be the retail stores, the li- the, the, pe- the people who, who have a license, and they will start selling cannabis in retail stores or online, or I don't know with, with, with what would be the, the real model. Mm-hmm. But at the, end of the ta- at the end of the day, you will have three different groups selling cannabis in the Mexican society. So that's why my recommendations are legalize and regulate medical cannabis then the next step is regulate hemp industry mm. and the third stage is to if if the if the medical and hemp works then move to recreational but but you need to to to, to have a, a little transition about what is a medical what is hemp and then move to the recreational if you do the if you do in a fast track the three industries it will be a very complicated implication. You will see. Okay. I mean, why do you think that it'll be a little complicated? Uh, uh, in my understanding, I think uh, since it has never been legal in a country, uh, it will take a lot of time for people to first of all understand, educate, and even yeah. for legal growers to even grow a plant, right? They'll have to take licenses, they'll have to take seeds and then start growing legally. Mm-hmm. Uh, even after you legalize it, they, you need some time to grow the plant as well in general and yeah. a lot of things around compliance. What do you think are the challenges uh, to legalize everything altogether? The, the challenge will be what I say, uh, supply chain. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have people growing legal cannabis or hemp, mm-hmm. You don't have you don't you don't have the raw material to 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 start with with hmm. uh, uh, with nothing, so okay. this is the, the the big challenge. The second challenge is uh, a stigma, because this is sti- in Mexico as as a difference from other countries. Uh, Mexico, uh, the Mexico, so in in some places they call the legacy market. Hmm. So Mexico does not have a legacy market. Mexico has a violent, a violent market. So for us as Mexicans, the cannabis is always related to criminal groups, to crimes, uh, to corruption. Uh, so this is this is uh, for Mexicans. What is the what is marijuana? So uh, stigma is another important thing. Uh, the third one is education. Nobody understands the plant. Nobody understands the benefit or, or the challenge of the plant in the recreational or the medical aspects. 
Mexico does not have enough physicians who really understand and who really have practice uh, with medical cannabis. Uh, there is no, uh, this is the third challenge. The other challenge is that Mexico will only depend from imports from the from uh, at the beginning because yeah. if you don't have local production you will you will get all the products from maybe us because it's in the border with us canada or other other jurisdictions who have enough products and mexico will have will depends only by imports for some years uh, and they might even of, in like yeah. they might even get used to the import side right? then the government might just focus on importing the material and uh, i i remember seeing on linkedin a lot of companies from us and canada were putting mexico as one of their international markets way back in 2017 so every like everyone is looking to sell their ex excess supply or excess grow to mexico yeah. and like one point that you were talking about that it's all about uh, like economic development for the people inside mexico like people like farmers who are going to grow and sell the plant that won't happen if people are like importing the plant itself yes the the the, the, the situation is what i always said is that create the create the legal framework is easy because yeah. it's only in paper so everyone is <laughs> is talking about oh mexico will legalize yes in paper everything looks amazing and beautiful when you go to the implementation of the law and you will start facing the problems of distribution, of growing, of seeds, of imports, of quality of products, of all these things, uh, you will see, oh, okay, it's not as, not as easy as looks in, in paper. So uh, that's why I think that Mexico needs a, several periods of periods of transition yeah. to one business to another. And the first thing that Mexico should do is to to set a bylaw of the medical cannabis because mm -hmm. medical cannabis was approved three or four years ago. So the only thing that, that we need in well, that, that we need in Mexico is the, the bylaw of the regulatory body, which is the COFEPRIS. Mm -hmm. And the COFE, if the COFEPRIS set the, the, the legal framework, okay. Every, everyone will know, okay, CBD will be a prescription, THC is authorized or not, it, the, the selling will be in pharmacies or in other uh, retail stores, uh, which which disease will be potentially treated with CBD, well, this and that. So this information is very good. So that's why <clears throat> that's the thing that many companies around the world are, are waiting to see what yeah. will be the legal the legal framework about the medical cannabis because the recreational aspects is totally different. Yeah, I mean, also it's one of the great points of legalizing medically, like you said, that the supply chain would become much more easier since it's it'll be like a controlled substance. The growing would be would be much more better, and then from there on, it'll be a proper business model for people to follow if they want to legalize it in terms of recreational and yeah i mean yeah that those are like such great points uh what do you think about uh like you mentioned you were talking to some groups from the parliament like you have been talking to government in general since years so what is the response from the government like are they looking to uh are they excited about this because it brings a lot of prosperity to farmers and a uh, lot of patients will get some relief also and there's a lot of money behind it as well so are the, is the government like excited about legalizing it? What I see is the government is the, 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 the all the, all the, all the public, uh, the media mm -hmm. and the government talk about the right to use cannabis as a recreational thing. Mm -hmm. So the missing part of this conversation is patients yeah. and potential growers. All this conversation is focused about the right to use cannabis and why, why, do, why, if I am Mexican, why, mm -hmm. I, why the government can prohibit it, the the way to use cannabis. So got it. It's focused on the recreational aspect, not the medicinal, not the industrial. But yeah, uh, that's why the government needs to make different plants 
for each industry yeah uh, i was talking to the ceo of materia uh, deepak anand and he mentioned mm-hmm. the same thing about india that uh, we should have to focus more on the patients and people with illnesses they have to come forward and demand the medicine rather than just focusing on the, the recreational aspects and uh, i even chatted with a few people in india who are working for medical cannabis in terms of ayurveda to the extent that it is legal in india and they also want to make sure that the first the patient gets what do they want not focusing on recreational even though recreational is something that sounds cool and that gives more uh, you know commercial opportunities for people uh, w- what do you think is the next steps for the mexico legalization movement like you mentioned they have taken some time till i think april 2021 yes the the next legislative period will be in uh, the beginning of february to the end of april okay so the lower chamber has 3 months to create uh, amendments Mm-hmm. Uh, to have readings, to disc- discussions about this bill, and to vote it. If yeah. they approve the bill in the lower chamber, they send it again to the Senate uh, with the amendment. I see. I think they will have several amendments, so mm-hmm. it's not. It, it, it will be not the same. So with these amendments, they send it again to the Senate, and the Senate voted again, <laughs> and then it's a period of uh, the, the final draft. will be voted but by both chambers and then send it to the to the president for a signing yeah, and that's when and when the the the, the presidency signed the bill they put uh, they 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 write that this law become real become uh, in fact uh, at the next day in the coming 60 days in the coming 60 months So this is a definition of the presidency legal group when will be uh, the the right time to start with the law so uh, now if if the, if the if the bill pass yeah now the government start with implementation of, of all the aspects of the thing but uh, it will be a huge issue it, it is it is it is it is a huge and important uh, issue in Mexico pro is possible that it is this bill is doesn't have too much impact in the mexican society because the pandemic and the economic situation in mexico are are are, are big problems now yeah but at the end when the when the mexican society see what is the implication of the legalization and the regulation of the cannabis in medical in recreational and all the other things will be oh my gosh it's not as it's not as easy as, as looks in the, in the paper definitely uh, one of the things that i can think of is uh, uh, when government has to distribute li- uh, distribute licenses for growing the plant it might go to certain individuals who are politically connected uh, because i think that might happen a- in india what do you think we need to see what happened the process of license yeah. we need to see which model is the better for the for growing the plant Uh, everyone said uh, oh, uh, around the world that oh many companies go to mexico because mexico offers several options i don't think that it will be in the in the short time because if you see and if you read some news about the in the cannabis industry mm-hmm. several of the companies big companies are having problems financial problems yeah uh, they, some of them are closing the greenhouses so i don't think that at the at the other day was hundreds of companies fly to mexico to open facilities yeah so the the my my thoughts is that mexico needs to create a, a network of small and medium sized growers to start the industry in mexico and to be more beneficial and if a big company likes to go and to make investment in mexico they need to be ruled by this local and Uh, regional uh, growers yeah i mean it has quite become a joke in the cannabis industry in canada when uh, a big company a big public listed company makes a loss everybody starts posting on linkedin and other social media channels but <laughs> like they have to become profitable at some point and yeah they also overestimated a lot of things and like you said uh, they're now shutting down greenhouses and laying off a lot of employees so it's mm-hmm. not 
green as green as it looks <laughs> everywhere yeah 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 a few years ago easy money is around and now uh, uh, the, the the investors are taking time to make mm. decisions to put the money and yeah. to see not only the, the Mexico, the son of Mexico, the environment. No, no, no. They they are looking for more important things in supply chain, in distribution, in, in added value. And if Mexico can can offer these things, it, it will be good. But if the government does not plan the, the business model I'm talking about, yeah. if they don't plan a, a good business model for growers and a possible investment from overseas, uh, it will change the conversation. Yeah, I mean, you correctly mentioned that uh, it's all about the execution and laws will just be laws until <laughs> somebody yeah. starts implementing them. Yeah. yeah, that's a real challenge from Mexico, the implementation and the execution, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. It was a great pointers and I'm happy to talk to somebody just from uh, the land itself rather than reading articles on LinkedIn and other platforms and like just <laughs> they're writing things on their own and imagining things. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for your time and for this conversation. And I will keep you updated to you and all you guys about what is happening in Mexico.